Welcome back, this is Rito here, and today we are going to be doing a class guide for the Rogue class on the Calamity mod. And the reason we're taking a look at this class right now is because we just finished the Rogue playthrough with Raiden, and so I think it's a great time to do a class guide. I'm going to be showing you all the different weapons and armors and accessories to use throughout the game as a Rogue class. And just as a disclaimer, I'm going to be showing you the ones that I preferred. There's lots of different options, but I'll just kind of show you the things that I found work best for me. As a rogue, when you first start in Calamity, you'll have a bag, and when you open that bag, you'll be given some throwing bricks. And this is a good weapon to have just at the start of the game. It will help you get to a desert biome where you can quickly upgrade to Choya. And the Choya is a really good item because you can craft a whole bunch of it really quickly. You just need to cut down a few cactus. And from there, it's time to go underground and start getting either the Gleaming Dagger or the Gilded Dagger. It depends on what world you're in. If it's a Platinum world, you'll need to craft the Gleaming Dagger from Throwing Knives and Platinum Bars. And then a Gold world will give you the Gilded Dagger. And these are quite powerful, definitely capable of defeating the Desert Scourge quite quickly. And for armor, I would go for the Snow Ruffian because it's really easy to acquire. It just requires the snow blocks, ice blocks, and boreal wood. I would also recommend getting the crystalline, and that just requires the wolfram knives, diamonds, and fallen stars. And of course, the diamond is the most tricky part for this recipe, but as you can see, it can do some pretty cool effects and lots of damage early on. I would definitely recommend getting your Hermes boots and cloud in a bottle at a bare minimum, and you can also get the Raider's Talisman, which is really good for boosting your damage as a rogue. And it's really simple to craft, it's just leather and obsidian. A red balloon is always nice, and frog legs are great, especially in death mode when the bosses move a lot quicker. You can see I'm already moving quite quickly, and this is all pre-boss. And you can also get the Luxor's Gift from the Desert Biome in the special shrine. And that's a really good one to have too. It will throw out that little scorpion that bounces, and so that will do a lot of extra damage. And then if you can get the Goblin Tinkerer, you'll be able to get bundles of balloons or upgrade to a blue horseshoe balloon or get Frostbark boots, but you'll be able to do just fine with Hermes boots and a Cloud in a Bottle. And before fighting your first boss, it's good to get a few buffs like the Well-Fed buff, the Swiftness, Iron Skin, Regeneration, and even Invisibility since that does help the Rogue class. Another thing I forgot to mention is that the Rogue class is unique to Calamity and it adds a Stealth attack. So throughout the game, you have the decision of whether or not you want to go more stealth oriented or just run in there and do lots of attacks. So you'll just have to kind of play around with it and see what you prefer. So with this gear, you'll easily be able to defeat the Desert Scourge and Eye of Cthulhu. And after that, you'll be able to go fight Krabulon from the Mushroom Biome. But I would definitely recommend using the Counter Scarf or the Shield of Cthulhu because that will be very helpful. And you can get both of those from the Eye of Cthulhu. The Counter Scarf is a Revengeance Mode drop. And throughout the rest of this class guide, I'm going to be including Revengeance drops because I've always played on Revengeance or Death Mode, and so that's just the items I'm used to using. And then the Arrowstone is another item that I think would be pretty powerful, especially if you haven't farmed up frog legs. And once when you've defeated a few bosses, you'll be able to upgrade your armor. You can upgrade to the Victide after defeating the Eye of Cthulhu or the Desert Scourge, and that's a pretty powerful armor set. You can also upgrade to the Sulphurous armor and that's by getting materials from the Sulphurous Sea. And I would recommend going this path because it's got a lot better attributes than the Victide armor, and I think it's pretty cool that it's unique to the Rogue class. And then you can also get the Dune Hopper from the Desert Scourge. This is a rare item though, so it'll take a while to acquire, but it is pretty powerful. But it's definitely not something you need because you can easily get the Micro Root, which is really good, or the Shroomerang, and also the Seashell Boomerang. And with these weapons, you should be able to defeat the Eater of Worlds, the Brain of Cthulhu, the Perforators, or the Hive Mind, all depending on which world you're in, Crimson or Corruption. And once when you've defeated the Perforators or the Hive Mind, you'll have access to Aerialite, which will allow you to craft a bunch of really good stuff like the Turbo Lance, the Feather Knife, as well as the Tracking Disc from the 1.4.5 Rust and Dust update. And by this point in the game, you should also be able to craft the Infernal Chris because you'll have Hellstone and you can craft the Rot Ball with the True Shadow Scales and you'll be able to craft Sky Stabbers. So these weapons are really powerful. You can see the Turbo Lance shoots out those blades. Very cool. Feather Knife. It's like a throwing dagger that shoots out these and explodes. And then the Tracking Disc is really powerful because it shoots lasers. I would highly recommend getting this one. And the Infernal Chris is probably the weakest of all of these items that I'm using right now. 
But then you've got the Rot Ball, it pierces, does really good damage, and the Sky Stabber you can just throw out and bosses like the Queen Bee will dash right into it and it can make really quick work of a lot of bosses. And you can right click and pull them in. You'll see this effect throughout the Rogue playthrough because there's several items that do that sort of thing. And then you'll want to upgrade to your Aerospec armor and that's pretty powerful, although Sulfurous armor is still pretty good at this point in the game. And as you prepare for Skeletron, you can also get the Endurance Potion, Rage Potion, Wrath Potion, and the Flask of Fire, which will be good to add to all of your other buffs that you're using, and it will make that fight all that much more easy. And as far as accessories go, I'd use about the same accessories like the Frostbark Boots, the Blue Horseshoe Balloon, the Raider's Talisman, Frog Legs, and Counter Scarf. And once when you've defeated Skeletron, you'll be able to get bones from the dungeon, and you'll be able to craft this Enchanted Axe, which is really powerful. You'll be able to buy the Glaive, and get the lionfish from the abyss, as well as by the Kylie from the bandit. And so as you progress through the game and beat different bosses, definitely check her merchandise because she will sell new items like the glaive and the Kylie. And you also be able to craft the skyline wings once when you have bones, it just requires airy light, feather, fallen stars. And these are really awesome wings because they are pre hard mode. So you can go ahead and use them instead of your balloon. And with this setup, you're good to go to fight the slime god. The lionfish is probably what I would prefer, although at the very end of the fight, I found that Kylie was pretty good for defeating the centerpiece of the slime god, the one that's like kind of a yin yang. And at this point in the game, you should also have access to Yarm Stimulants. You can craft that at an alchemy table using these potions right here. After you defeat the slime god, you'll be able to upgrade to Statagel armor, which I would highly recommend. It's very powerful. And then the gel dart. And that's probably the best weapon to use against the Wall of Flesh as a rogue. So that's what I used and it works quite well. You can have it bouncing on the bottom of the arena and doing lots of damage to the different parts of the Wall of Flesh. And once when you've defeated the Wall of Flesh and entered hard mode, you've actually got some really powerful upgrades you can get right away. The first thing you wanna do is run over to the Astral Biome and defeat a bunch of Titans, get some of these Titan Hearts and then break some of the trees in the astral biome and get the astral monolith and then you'll be able to craft this amazing titan heart armor and i would go ahead and just upgrade to that and that should carry you through pretty much all of the mechanical bosses and the bosses before plantera and the other thing i would highly recommend doing while you're in the astral biome is fishing up this mollusk it is so incredibly powerful if you throw it straight up in the air it rains down all of these particles that will home in on the boss and do just crazy damage this can basically defeat all of the mechanical bosses, the Brimstone Elemental, the Aquatic Scourge. This can do all of it. So definitely grab this, grab your Titan Heart armor, and upgrade a few of your accessories. Like you can craft the Ankh Shield, the Grand Gelatin's quite good. You've got the Ambrosial Ampoule, which is nice. The Deific Amulet, um, the Rogue Emblem, which you can get from the Wall of Flesh and then either demon wings or angel wings. And these are really good because the angel wings get extra defense, life regen, and max life, whereas the demon wings get increased damage and critical strike chance. There is a few other options that are quite easy to get and powerful, like the prismaline right here. It will home in. It does lag a little bit, but it can really do good work against bosses like cryogen. And it's very simple. It's just the upgrade to this crystalline. You need to go and find some mollusk husks in the sunken sea biome though. And then the other is the Blazing Star. I really like this weapon. It's just the upgrade to the Glaive. You just need Hellstone and Essence of Chaos. So really easy to get those. And I found this to be really powerful when exploring underground and going into the Astral Biome and everything. I don't think it's really that good for bosses, but it'll hold you over until you can get your Galaxian Mollusk. And you also have the Spear of the Paleolith, which is pretty powerful. And of course, the Spear of Destiny is the best possible option, I think. It homes in, does crazy damage, but this is a really rare drop and you can only get it on a Crimson World. So if you're really lucky and you manage to find the Spear of Destiny, go ahead and use that because that's probably gonna be your best weapon until Plantera. But like I said, as long as you have this Mollusk, the Titan Armor, and a few good accessories from hard mode, you'll be good to go to defeat all of the bosses all the way up to Plantera. And as you go through the bosses in the start of hard mode, you'll also get some pretty powerful items that are worth mentioning, like the Daedalus armor and the Starlight Wings. Those work really well together. And you can get this after defeating Cryogen, although it's a pretty similar tier to the Titan Heart armor, so it's up to you whether you want to use Daedalus or Titan Heart, but they're both pretty powerful. And then after you've defeated the mechanical bosses, be sure to craft your Angel Treads, and those are a great upgrade to the Frostbark Boots. 
And then if you really want to farm a long time, you can get the Kelvin Catalyst. Although it's definitely not overly powerful. So if you are short on time or you don't like farming, it's definitely one you can skip. After defeating the Aquatic Scourge, the Skyfin Bomber is a really powerful thing that you can get from the Acid Rain event. The Skyfin Bomber homes really well, does a lot of damage. And once when you defeat the three mechanical bosses, you can also upgrade your Pwn Hammer to the Ponage Hammer. And this one's pretty powerful. It's a fun weapon to use. It can do really well against Calamitous and Plantera, so definitely a good one to craft. And the last thing I wanted to mention is the Moab. It's actually a really powerful wing, so I recommend using that. It's a bit of a long crafting recipe, but the Moab really gives you a ton of mobility, and it was quite helpful for me when I was fighting the Plaguebringer Goliath in the Rogue playthrough. And after defeating Calamitous and Plantera, you'll definitely want to upgrade to either the Reaver armor or the Umbrafile armor. Both are pretty powerful. The Umbrafile does a little bit more damage in my opinion, but the Reaver armor is pretty good, so really you can't go wrong. Either one's very good. And you can get the Vampiric Talisman from upgrading your Rogue Emblem with Solar Veils after defeating Calamitous. And in my opinion, it's definitely a must as a Rogue class because of that lifesteal. It just makes the game a lot easier. And for weapons, You've got the Fantasy Talisman, which is very powerful. This is going to be one that you can use on a lot of bosses at this point in the game. And then the Brackish Flask, which you can get from Leviathan. And then you've got the Dust Storm in a Bottle, which is pretty easy to craft. Just Holy Water, the Grand Scale from the Grand Sand Shark, and the Sandstorm in a Bottle. And you can still use your Mollusk, Skyfin Bomber, and Ponage Hammer, because those weapons are still pretty powerful at this point in the game. And after you defeat the Golem, you'll be able to unlock the Scoria Bars in the Abyss. So definitely go pick those up and you'll be able to craft the Hydrothermic Armor. And then the Hadal Mantle is a good upgrade from this booster right here. And then you can also upgrade your Ponage Hammer with the Paladin's Hammer and Scoria Bars into the Fallen Paladin's Hammer, which is pretty powerful. And at this point in the game, what I would recommend doing is fighting the Ravager over and over until you can get the Corpus Averter. It's a 5% drop rate, but it is so powerful and it will make fighting the Plaguebringer Goliath a lot simpler. Getting this Corpus Averter weapon is just so dang good because of all this lifesteal, plus the fact that these red blades are homing in. And another thing you can use to make your fight against the Ravager a lot easier is the System Bane, because this is going to shoot out lots of electricity, so definitely throw these down while you're fighting the Ravager, and that will help do a lot of extra damage. Once when you've got these weapons, it will make the Plaguebringer Goliath fight a lot easier, and you can get the Syringe. Or if you're super lucky, you can get the Malachite, which is the 1% drop rate weapon from the Plaguebringer Goliath. I forgot to mention this earlier, but in hard mode, you can upgrade a lot of your potions, like the Fire Flask. You should instead switch it to the Flask of Icor, and then you should switch to the Cadence Potion, and you can switch your Invisibility into the Shadow Potion right here with the Shadow Fish. You can also have the Titan Scale Potion, the Penumbra Potion, Shattering Potion, which will be really good for extra rogue damage, and then the Bounding Potion and the Soaring Potion. These just help you fly and jump faster. Definitely not required, but they're nice to have. And as you prepare for the fight with the Moon Lord, you'll want to go ahead and defeat the Astrum Dias boss, and that will give you lots of good stuff, like the upgrade to the Radiant Star. It's very much like the Prismaline, and it will home in really nicely, so this is something you can use against the Moon Lord that will work pretty well. Um, the Corpus Averter is really good still, so I still think you can use that against the Moon Lord and do pretty well. You can also use the Shard of Entumbra, and after defeating some of the Celestial Events, you'll be able to upgrade to this Luminous Striker. It just requires the Melt Construct, Stardust Fragments, Turbulence, Scourge of the Sea, and the Spear of the Paleolith. And if you have the Malachite, that's still pretty powerful. And you can also use Plague Nades, which is an upgrade to the Bee Nade, which you can get from defeating the Plaguebringer Goliath. And what makes those pretty good is this Plague Hive, which you can craft with the Ancient Manipulator. That's just an upgrade to all sorts of these bee-related accessories. And another thing I would highly recommend before fighting the Moon Lord is getting the Heart of the Elements. It's a combination of all these summon accessories, and it just does so much good stuff. And then once when you've defeated Astrum Dias, you can go ahead and put on the Astral Armor, but definitely note it will remove your stealth bonuses, so you won't be able to do any stealth attacks. This may get patched in a future update or something, but I didn't really find it to be that big of a deal. I like the Astral Armor, and to go with your Astral Armor, definitely pick up the Hadarian Wings, because these are pretty good, and they synergize with Astral Armor. The Absorber is another good accessory. It's an upgrade to the Grand Gelatin and has just a huge recipe list, but by this point in the game, you should have most of these. 
and it's definitely worth picking up even if it requires a little bit of farming. It makes you just a lot more tanky, which will make the Moon Lord fight all that much easier. This is pretty much the setup I would go for with the Rod of Discord, which you can craft in Calamity. You should be just fine to defeat the Moon Lord. After the Moon Lord, you've got a lot of good options. You can get this poker directly from the Moon Lord. You can also get this Stellar Contempt. It's an upgrade to the Fallen Paladin's Hammer. And that's a pretty powerful one as well. And then you've got the Celestial Reaper. You can buy this from the Bandit. And then you've got the Elemental Disc. I feel like this is the best one at this point in the game for a Rogue. The other one I really like is the Lunar Kanai because this one can actually home in. If you're struggling on Providence, another option is that you can fight the Sentinels and get some of the weapons from them first, and then go ahead and fight Providence. Some of the other items that you'll want to pick up before fighting Providence are the Seraph Tracers. These are the combination of the Angel Treads, Any Wings, Cores of Calamity, Life Alloy, and Luminite. And at this point in the game, defeating Leviathan is easy enough, so you can go ahead and farm up the community. It's a 1% drop from Leviathan, but it's a pretty powerful accessory. Uh, I don't usually recommend getting it too early in the game because it can get very tedious fighting Leviathan, but you'll definitely want to pick up the Empyrean armor. There's also the Exodus Wings, which can be a good combination with your Empyrean armor because they increase rogue damage and critical strike. So you can switch off your Seraph Tracers and use these Exodus Wings instead. And before you fight Providence, be sure to also get your Profaned Rage Potion and Holy Wrath Potion. And make sure you've also got all of your health upgrades to this point in the game and upgrade your healing potions as high as you can before you fight Providence because that will help quite a bit. After you defeat Providence, you'll have access to the Terragon armor. And the Terragon armor is very tanky, especially if you combine it with the Terragon wings. And this requires you to not use your Seraph Tracers, but I feel like during most of these boss fights that you have coming up, it's not actually really that necessary to have a good fast movement speed. Plus you can get the Dragon Falling Mount, which will make you run way faster than the Seraph Tracers will. So I usually use the Terragon wings until I upgrade to Blood Flare armor. Another thing you get from Providence is the Elysian Aegis. I use it instead of the Asgard's Valor. Plus you can activate the Elysian Guard, which will bump all of your different attributes quite a bit. And after defeating Providence, you'll have some pretty good items like the Shattering Sun, which homes in. And if you fight Cygnus, you'll be able to get the Cosmic Kanai. And this is a really good one. It does tons of damage, but requires that you be pretty close. And then you've got the Blood Soak Crasher, which you can get from getting Bloodstone Cores. And you'll need to fight Calamitous the Brimstone Elemental or the Ravager, or go to the dungeon and fight some of the mobs down there, which will drop some small amounts of Bloodstone. You can also craft the Sealed Singularity after defeating the Ceaseless Void. And another item you can get from Bloodstone Cores is the Alpha Virus. And lastly, the Deific Thunderbolt, which is something that you can get from fighting the Stormweaver. All of these are pretty powerful, including the Elemental Disc. And you'll be able to use these to defeat the Poltergast and unlock your next tier of items. To me, I feel like the Rogue class struggles a little bit right after the Moon Lord, but where it really starts getting powerful is once when you've defeated the Poltergast. You'll be able to get the Valediction from the Reaper Sharks in the Abyss, and you'll be able to upgrade your Luminous Striker with Ruinous Souls and Phantom Lances into the Phantasmal Ruin, which is one of the best weapons at this point in the game. It just does such good damage. This will make very quick work of the Devourer of Gods and the Valediction is also a lower lag option. And at this point in the game, you can also upgrade to the Blood Flare armor or the Omega Blue armor. I usually go with Blood Flare, but Omega Blue is very good as well. And then you've also got the Affliction from the Poltergast. That's another great item. And you've got the Reaper Tooth Necklace for those who like to go as a glass cannon that will boost your damage a ton, but make you a little bit more susceptible to damage. And at this point, there are so many powerful accessories. It's really up to your personal preference and which accessories you like, but you can really use a ton of different options for the Devourer of Gods. As long as you're using the Phantasmal Ruin, you're really gonna be pretty well set to defeat it. And once again, remember to get as many good buffs as you can and keep those active during the fight. After defeating the Devourer of Gods, you've got a ton of really great upgrades. You can fight the Frost Moon and the Pumpkin Moon, get the Draydon's Forge right here, and then you can upgrade to the God Slayer armor. That's gonna be really great. It gives you a revive. And then you can also upgrade to the Elysian Tracers. And now you've got tons of great accessory options. Definitely use the Nanotech, because that's a great accessory for the Rogue. I like the Asgardian Aegis as well. The Core of the Blood Gods is a great one. And the Sponge, which is a combination of the Ambrosial Ample and the Absorber. You've also got the Status' Void Sash, the Reaper Tooth Necklace, the Venerated Locket. The Heart of the Elements is getting a little bit less necessary at this point in the game. Got the Draydon's Heart, which is a pretty good option. I usually don't use it that much. The 
Amalgam is very good. The Astral Arcanum is pretty good. And the Rampart of Deities, of course. That's another good one. As far as weapons go, I would definitely recommend just going with the Executioner's Blade. I found that to be very consistent, really good on Yarn Phase 1, and I even used it on Yarn Phase 2 as well. I feel like the Galaxy Smasher lacks just a little bit of range, which is why I didn't use it on Yarn. The Hypothermia and Penumbra are both ones that have really good range, so you could definitely use these on Yarn Phase 1 and do just fine. And now that you've defeated Yarn Phase 1, you've got a few upgrades that you can do. The first is the Silva Armor. Definitely put that on. And I would also recommend using the Silva Wings. They're pretty fast, and they also give you extra revive health. And then you've got the Eclipse Mirror. This one's very good. I didn't really use it at this point in the game, but I used it later in my endgame build. But it's definitely one that you can use. The Yarm's Gift is also another good accessory. And you've got a bunch of great items like the Infernal Spear. Very good damage. You've got the Scourge of the Cosmos. It shoots out all of these little homing projectiles. And that's just the upgrade to the Scourge of the Corruptor. And then you've got the Empyrean Knives, which is an upgrade to the Vampiric Knives. Also another good option. And the Eclipses Fall. And as a quick example of a loadout that you can use for Yarn Phase 2, Silva Armor, Silva Wings, Affliction, Nanotech, Asgardian Aegis, Yarm's Gift, Core of the Blood God, and the Sponge. And as I mentioned earlier, there are tons of different options for your accessories. The Vampiric Talisman's quite good if you want to get some extra self-heal. You've got some of these right here and some of these over here. So definitely mix and match and find what accessories match your playstyle the most. After defeating Yara in Phase 2, you're going to be preparing for the Supreme Calamitous fight. So it is finally time to put on your Auric Tesla armor and switch to your Celestial Tracers. And for your weapons, you'll definitely want to go with the Celestis or Supernova. I feel like the Celestis is much more consistent because it just shoots in such an easy line, does lots of consistent damage. Although if you can get good with the Supernova, it will also do pretty well against Supreme Calamitous. The Plasma Grenade, I feel like is the worst of the three items at this point, so I didn't really include it because you might as well go with the Celestis or Supernova. And then another item that you may want to consider for the Supreme Calamitous fight is the Astral Arcanum. It does a nice reflect of a projectile when it hits you, and it will heal you for the projectile's damage. So that's a good one to put on and consider for that fight. And the main other thing you want to do to prepare for the Supreme Calamitous fight is craft your highest level healing potions and then craft the Draconic Elixirs, because that's another potion that you should be using during that fight. And then make sure you've done all of your consumable health upgrades and you will be ready to fight Supreme Calamitous. So if I remember correctly, when I fought Supreme Calamitous, this was the loadout that I used. I roll everything to Menacing because I find that works pretty well for me. So I use the Celestial Tracers, the Affliction, Nanotech, Asgardian Aegis, Astral Arcanum, the Core of the Blood God, and the Sponge. And then of course I use the Celestis as my main weapon. And as a side note, using the Drunk Princess in the Calamity mod, you can get these candles which you can place down, and these will give you different buffs like extra damage, damage resistance, movement speed, and health regen. And then she also sells potions like Tequila and Tequila Sunrise. These are ones that I like. They boost your defense and your damage and all sorts of good stuff. And it only takes effect during the day. So make sure if you're using these sort of potions to try to take advantage of it. If you're using Tequila Sunrise or Tequila, make sure you are fighting Supreme Calamitous during the day. There are some other potions that you can get from her as well that are pretty powerful. So be sure to look through her inventory. One thing to note is all of these items from the Drunk Princess will reduce your life regen. And if you have more than three, you'll get a pretty powerful debuff that will slowly reduce your life. So definitely be careful with which ones you use. One thing you'll just want to be careful about is not having too many buffs active at the same time because your buff bar will kind of go crazy. So be sure to pick your most powerful buffs and stick with those ones. Once when you've defeated Supreme Calamitous, you'll have access to all of the post Supreme Calamitous weapons like the Scarlet Devil, which is the best one in my opinion. You've also got the Nano Black Reaper, which is amazing. The Illustrious Knives, which are the final upgrade to the Vampiric Knives and the Mage Hammer of Might, which is the final upgrade to the Paladin's Hammer. Another great thing to use at this point in the game is the Eclipse Mirror, because if you have your full stealth, you'll do a stealth strike and it will heal you 120 using the Scarlet Devil. So you can very easily keep your life full during the boss rush and during the Supreme Calamitous fight by pacing some stealth strikes in between whenever you take damage. And there's different times in the boss rush that you'll want to use different weapons, like the Mage Hammer of Might is really powerful on the worm bosses. But for the most part, I go ahead and stick with the Scarlet Devil for a rogue class in the end game. And then of course you have the option to switch to the Demon Shade armor. 
and that gives you that little demon. It also gives you a ton of minion slots if you want to go ahead and have a summon going as well, which will debuff your enemies and give you a lot more damage. Although I usually stick with Auric Tesla in the end game because it gives us the Silva and the God Slayer revives. And for the end game, there are tons of different accessory options that really depend on your playstyle. But this right here is usually what I use just the Sponge, Core of the Blood God, Eclipse Mirror, Asgardian Aegis, Nanotech, Affliction, and the Celestial Tracers. And that's it for this Rogue Class Guide video. I hope you've enjoyed it and found it helpful. And if you want to get some more details and see a closer look at a Rogue playthrough, you can check out the Raiden the Rogue playthrough. That's where this base is from. And it was a ton of fun. We did it on death mode. So you can see that series and see how I prepared for each of the bosses. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. If you have, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.